The ground does not always roar before it fails. Sometimes it whispers through faint cracks, through bubbling asphalt, through the slow sinking of a road that only yesterday seemed intact. This is what residents of Pozzuoli and Naples have witnessed in recent months. Roads collapsing in the Campi Flegre caldera, asphalt blistering as if it were alive, fumaroles breathing sulphur into the air while earthquakes tremble beneath their feet. The questions are unavoidable. What is truly driving these failures? Are they merely engineering flaws exposed by tremors? Or are they warnings etched into the streets by a restless volcanic system? And if the surface is already giving way, what pressures must be building below? Campi Flegre has long been recognized as one of the most dangerous volcanic regions in the world. Unlike Vesuvius, which dominates the skyline with a single cone, Campi Flegre is a caldera, an enormous depression formed by ancient explosive eruptions. It stretches beneath urban districts housing hundreds of thousands of people. Its danger does not come only from eruptions but from the ceaseless breathing motion of the crust, known as bradyseism. The surface swells upward when fluids and gases accumulate at shallow depths, then sinks again as pressures release. These motions, measured in centimetres each year, accumulate into rises and falls of more than a metre over decades. To live here is to live on a surface that never rests. This dynamism set the stage for the events of June 2025. A swarm of earthquakes rippled through the Solfatara Pisciarelli sector, their hypercenters shallow, between two and three kilometres, or about one to two miles beneath the surface. The strongest quakes measured just below magnitude four, but their significance lay not in their size, but in their clustering. Dozens of tremors in rapid succession stressed the already fractured crust, opening microcracks in the volcanic tuff and ignimbrites that underlie Pozzuoli. Through those cracks, gases began to migrate upward with renewed vigour. Days later, the consequences emerged on Via Antiniana, a vital artery cutting through the caldera. Witnesses first noticed subtle warping of the pavement, then bubbles rising beneath the asphalt, forming blister-like domes. Local media, including Fan Page, captured the scene and reported that technicians from the Osservatorio Vesuviano of the Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia INGV, had been dispatched to measure fumarolic activity and check for degassing anomalies. Soon after, the road gave way entirely in a collapse described as a voragine, a gaping void. Initial speculation from local officials suggested that sulphur and elevated ground temperatures had literally melted the asphalt. The truth, uncovered through technical inspections, was more complex. Engineers traced the collapse to a failed sewer conduit, likely fractured during the seismic swarm. Yet even this explanation pointed back to the volcanic system. The same earthquakes that cracked the conduit were triggered by deep pressure changes. The same gases that seeped upward corroded materials and escaped through manholes, creating the visible bubbles in the asphalt. The proximate cause was infrastructural, but the driving force was geologic. Nor was the June incident isolated. Subsequent months brought fresh reports of fissures and deformations along the same artery. In September, Pozzuoli News documented another subsidence event on Via Antiniana, less dramatic but equally alarming. Each episode followed the same pattern. Seismic activity, visible ground anomalies, municipal closures, temporary repairs and renewed anxiety. What makes these failures extraordinary is not just their recurrence, but the processes they reveal. Bradyseism does not only lift and sink the ground, it redistributes stresses across the crust. It alters the permeability of rocks, opening and sealing fractures that direct the flow of hydrothermal fluids. When poor pressure builds within shallow aquifers, volcanic tuff loses its cohesion, behaving more like a slurry than a stable foundation. Asphalt and concrete laid confidently above deform and collapse as the ground beneath them subtly liquefies. The bubbling asphalt near Solfatara is an especially vivid sign of this interplay. In most volcanic fields, gases vent through fumaroles in open ground. In Campi Flegre, they also seek escape beneath paved roads and buildings. Asphalt blisters are not molten rock rising from below, but trapped gases lifting the surface where natural venting pathways intersect with human infrastructure. Instruments deployed by INGV confirmed anomalous degassing at these sites. Thermal cameras revealed hotspots invisible to the eye. 
In other words, the pavement was serving as an accidental lid over a localized vent. These surface manifestations echo the past. During the Brady seismic crisis of the early 1980s, the ground beneath Pozzioli rose by more than one meter in just a few years. Residents reported steaming cracks in courtyards, sudden road deformities, and the appearance of new fumaroles in urban zones. The government ultimately evacuated tens of thousands of people. No eruption followed, but the displacement of communities underscored how profoundly surface life can be disrupted by processes that remain confined underground. Today's bubbling roads and collapsing conduits are unsettling reminders that the same system is once again restless. The challenge for scientists and civil authorities is to interpret these warnings correctly. Road collapses alone do not mean magma is on the verge of eruption. They do, however, show that pressures in the shallow hydrothermal system are high enough to deform infrastructure. When earthquakes, uplift and degassing intensify simultaneously, the margin for error narrows. Monitoring becomes not just academic, but essential for civil protection. In this sense, Via Antiniana has become both a hazard and a diagnostic tool. Each collapse or bubble marks the locations where the crust is weakest, where fluids are moving and where stresses are concentrating. By correlating these surface scars with seismic records and satellite measurements of ground deformation, scientists can refine models of the evolving subsurface. These models in turn guide emergency planning, where to reinforce infrastructure, which areas to monitor most closely and how to anticipate future failures. Yet for residents, the science is shadowed by daily reality. They drive along streets where asphalt may blister overnight. They live in homes where cracks appear unbidden on walls. They breathe air laced with sulphur from fumaroles. Every visible mark of unrest fuels unease. And still the underlying question remains, is this simply another Brady seismic cycle that will subside in time or the beginning of an escalation toward eruption? When infrastructure collapses in Campi Flegre, it is tempting to treat it as nothing more than a civil engineering failure. Pipes rupture, asphalt weakens, drains clog. Yet to stop the story, there is to miss the hidden forces that made those failures inevitable. Every fracture and fissure on the surface is the footprint of a deeper process unfolding in the caldera's restless body. Bradyseism, the slow heaving of the ground, is the silent architect of stress. It is not merely an up-and-down motion, but a redistribution of forces across the crust. Each centimetre of uplift recorded by satellites and ground-based GPS instruments is the visible trace of pressures accumulating two to three kilometres below. In the present cycle, parts of Pozzuoli have risen by more than a metre since 2005. As the surface lifts, rocks are stretched, creating fractures. These cracks become conduits for fluids and gases. When the uplift subsides, the same cracks may close, trapping fluids in shallow pockets that rupture again when pressure rebuilds. This start-stop rhythm creates unpredictability. Unlike magma-driven inflation, which often provides clearer signs, hydrothermal bradyseism behaves erratically. Fluids surge, pressures spike, and surface signs appear seemingly at random. The collapse of Via Antiniana was not an accident, but a symptom of this ongoing struggle beneath the surface. The June 2025 earthquake swarm made that clear. No single quake exceeded magnitude 4, yet the swarm's shallow focus magnified its effect. Each tremor etched micro-fractures into the porous volcanic tuff, creating pathways for hot water and gases. Seismologists describe this as hydrofracturing, the cracking of rock by fluid pressure. Once opened, these fractures allow gases to accumulate beneath impermeable layers, forming pressure pockets strong enough to deform the surface. The bubbles in the asphalt, described by local media and documented by INGV technicians, were not quirks of poor roadwork. They were the hydrothermal system itself pressing upward, choosing asphalt and pipes as its vents. Beneath Solfatara and Pisciarelli lies a labyrinth of aquifers, fumarolic channels and fractured rock. Water heated by deeper magma rises through this network, mingling with carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. At shallow levels, chemical reactions intensify. Sulfur dioxide dissolves in groundwater, forming sulfuric acid that gnaws at concrete and metal. Engineers who examined damaged conduits after the collapse noted accelerated corrosion out of proportion to ordinary wear. 
the hydrothermal system had effectively shortened the lifespan of infrastructure, leaving it vulnerable to even moderate seismic stress. This corrosive environment ties directly into gas monitoring, which has become one of the most important tools for interpreting volcanic unrest. Scientists track the ratios of carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide at fumaroles because they reveal the balance between deeper magmatic contributions and shallower hydrothermal activity. In the weeks before and after the Via Antiniana collapse, INGV stations detected fluctuations in gas flux, a sign of renewed pressurization below. The bubbles observed in the asphalt were the surface expression of these fluctuations, gases leaking through cracks where urban construction had overlaid natural venting zones. To many, a blistering road surface may seem trivial compared with the spectre of eruption, but for volcanologists these anomalies are invaluable. They pinpoint where pressure is highest, where degassing is most intense, and where crustal weakness intersects with human structures. Each blister and fissure is both a hazard and a data set. By mapping these anomalies and correlating them with seismic and satellite observations, scientists can refine models of stress migration within the caldera. Those models in turn guide decisions about infrastructure, monitoring priorities and civil protection. The echoes of history add weight to these observations. In the early 1980s, Pozzuoli endured a dramatic bread seismic crisis. The ground rose more than a meter in just a few years. Fumaroles multiplied and buildings cracked under the strain. Authorities evacuated over 30,000 people, an upheaval that transformed the town. No eruption followed, but the event proved that the caldera's unrest alone could displace communities and destabilize daily life. Today's bubbling asphalt and collapsing conduits may appear smaller in scale, but they are written in the same script. The parallels remind residents and scientists alike that these events are not random quirks, but part of a recurring cycle. What makes Campi Flegre uniquely perilous is its overlap with dense urban life. More than half a million people live within the caldera, their roads, pipelines and electrical systems laid across fractured volcanic ground. Every failure is therefore a double reminder, first of the caldera's instability, and second of the fragility of the infrastructure woven through it. To wait only for signs of an impending eruption is to misunderstand the hazard. The volcano is already altering daily life through road collapses, corroded pipes, forced closures, and community unease. For many residents, the line between these disruptions and outright disaster is thin. In this sense, the bubbling asphalt and fractured streets are more than inconveniences. They are communications from the volcano. They show where pressure is migrating, where gases are rising, and where crustal strength has been spent. They may not foretell an eruption, but they testify that the system is alive, that it is in motion, and that it demands vigilance. To dismiss them would be to mistake subtle warnings for silence. As the ground continues to shift, the question facing Campi Flegre is not only whether it will erupt, but how society will endure the crises that unfold even without one. Each fissure, bubble and collapse is a reminder that this landscape is never still, and that coexisting with it requires constant awareness. The caldera writes its messages directly into the surface, and for those who walk and drive above it, learning to read those scars is a matter of safety as much as science. If you found this investigation insightful and want more people to understand what's happening beneath Campi Flegre, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to tap that hype icon to help this video reach a wider audience.